Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, budget workshop. This is a continuation of the meeting from April 19th. Um, we'll start with uh, the budget. Mr. Kelly, what number do we go to? Uh, let's see, let's start at turn to your complex revenues. Number 49. Thank 49. you. 49. Um, so you can take a, take a look through there and see that um, uh, the peer complex is still strong. Um, revenues are good. Uh, it's the little machine that can. Uh, <laughs> it keeps generating funds for us uh, and paying for itself. Uh, you see the transfers from general fund, COVID-19, and peer project um, stopped back in 2122. So we can flip on over to the next page if you'd like, get into the budget part, 49749. You'll see it shows a 6.62% decrease. And basically that is the drop of the capital expenditures. Um, those items have been purchased. One of them is the gate that you now see at the pier. Um, Personnel-wise, uh, we still have the vacant position uh, pier complex maintenance worker that we'll be working on this season to fill. We did make some changes. Um, as you know, uh, Lisa had gone to part-time, and then we brought in the new pier coordinator. Good morning. Um, so those, that's what you have in front of us. It's pretty much the... Um, the name of the new peer coordinator is... Oh, well, I knew you'd ask me. Please, and I'm always the one who... Please, Patricia. Patricia. It's Trish Beasley. Oh. What, your last name? I would have got the name wrong altogether. Patini. <laughs> Good Irish name. Patrice. Patrice. It's Trish. 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 Yeah. She's been with us in the part-time census, and then now she's full-time with us. And as y'all know, I'm terrible with names, as y'all know. Hey, um, you. <laughs> yeah. <I answered. laughs> but the uh, budget, as you see, is pretty much rolling right along with what it was last year. Um, they do a lot with what they have. Um, and if you have any kind of questions, the young ladies are here today for. Salary's gone down. Is that because Lisa's stepping back or? So Lisa's. Um, On the second page. Sometimes we do make a typo. <laughs> <laughs> now they've gone up from uh, current budget 205,637 to 222,589. This page. Sure, no. On the top of the second page, it was fifty nine nine five nine and twenty two, and asking for thirty eight 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 nine. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Full time. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Lisa, sorry when it changed down to when she went part. I'm sorry. I see what you're asking, Elvin. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a long week. Yes, it has. The driving force on this budget, before Lisa goes down through there, is you'll see on pier house repairs. In the prior years, we've had to put quite a bit of money into that pier house that we didn't anticipate. So we budgeted again for this year that we're in now, the 54000 And knock on wood, you can see that she's only had to spend $11,300 towards the pier house. And what we did in the prior years needed to be done. It wasn't just cosmetic. It was requirements. That that, we, that's mostly Coco Cabana Yes, where the, and yeah. where the pier house is and the cocoa and rubies. So, again, knock on wood, it, it'll sit there for a little bit longer <laughs> until we build a new one. And fishing passes go up constantly. Yes, 
So, um, Trish, right? Do I have that right? Welcome. Thank you. Um, all in all, there's some, some good news here, and I, again, want to acknowledge the extraordinary work that Lisa has done and continues to do in a more limited capacity. I, I guess my question would be, given um, the rentals that we're assessing in Coco Cabana, if, are we... Are we looking at their revenue and assessing the rental based on how successful the restaurant is? Initially, we had it set up at a flat sales rate plus a percentage over that rate, and then the contract was uh, redone just for the flat per month fee because we were, you know, having issues with how it was being accounted for. So well, we went to the flat rate, and it's made it a lot easier. I guess what I'm going to suggest is that uh, we might want to look at that and in terms of uh, we do better when you do better, you know, to paraphrase that commercial, when you earn more revenue, you give us more rental. That seems to me to be a balance that we ought to be looking at. I do want to ask, um, I guess both of you, if that's fair, uh, what do you see going forward in terms of projections for growth? Do you, are you thinking about attracting more events, more clientele, and if so, do you, do you have the advertising so budget? Are asking about 801? Yes, I'm sorry. So um, you actually even see that in this year's budget. Um, from the middle of March to the end of June, we have at least one wedding a week, mm -hmm. which is a significant increase from last year. Um, and the next year's budget, we now have weddings scheduled from the end of August through the end of November, um, at least one wedding every week. That is, again, a significant increase. Um, and then there are other events that are scheduled throughout the week. Um, so we've seen an increase. Uh, you know, I just mentioned to Trish yesterday, they had six inquiries just on Wednesday for a possible events. Okay. And they're starting to um, be different kinds of events than we've typically seen. Yeah, and again, from my perspective, you've done a wonderful job. I, I would like to see your advertising budget increased and, and so we maximize the revenue from that structure. That was always the proposition here. This was a business entity that we took on. One can question whether government should run anything, <laughs> but we do, and now that we're in the black, so to speak, I'd like to see us go further. Um, let me ask, that's... Can I add one more thing to that answer? So last year when I sat here, I didn't think I'd be going to part-time. So I had these ideas as to things that I might do. Um, so I think it's something to think about as far as maybe an intern or somebody else that can augment the staff to do some additional events that we would host as opposed to having people rent the facilities, um, that there are things that we could be doing and um, bring in more income. Yeah, you just anticipated my next question, what do you need? So you need an intern or something. No, you need additional staffing to help. If, if we're going to be having three to four events a week, you know, or even 10 to 12 a month, you're, you're gonna need somebody else there. Yeah, and, and I think we talked about this several several years ago, my goodness, mm -hmm. that there are only so many weddings available that we need to augment that revenue, that, that revenue stream with other events. So uh, I'm willing to consider a position called intern or whatever we title it to provide more assistance so that we can become more profitable. Uh, let me ask one last question about the parking situation. How is that working? Are there there's a few problems just with the website going down. People come in and we just had to call and then there's, they, people are right on it. The customer service is very good that we got feedback from, from auto getting right back to them. That's just good to hear. Mr. Uh, Kelly, do you concur with that? Well, on their side, they don't see everything that we see. Um, as far as the, uh, it took a while to get the voucher system in place. Um, it's taken a while for us to be able to see exactly what's going on on a daily basis. We still don't have that. Um, and then we don't see the tickets or the complaints or anything coming in yet because they don't have the dashboard up and running. Um, so there is things that we do need to be able to get from him that we're not getting currently. And then we have a meeting scheduled with him for next week to discuss some of these uh, and to look at uh, what we look at for the next season. Because um, 
what we're doing now is we're we're comping a lot of things, um, and people are learning that we're comping things, and and so they're coming to where we're comping. Mm -hmm. So they they they're learning the system Faster as it goes. Than they are <laughs> to look at just the um, immediate parking area right in front of the pier would be free parking, um, and it'd be assigned for these two things. But we don't have a parking attendant standing outside watching what's going on, um, and we don't have those kind of things. But the 604 parking lot and the other areas, I think eventually we're going to have to do away with the vouchers uh, because we are losing funds and losing revenue by doing these. Well, and it may be the case that if we uh, fully maximize 801, that when people rent it or we host events that we may need an on-the-ground presence. We just don't know. I'm, I'm going to express my frustration that we don't have data from Otto. This, this is really not acceptable. So thank you for pushing them. Uh, if need be, get Mr. Eads to issue a subpoena. But we need the data. They're, they work for us. And that was one of the things they promised us. Yeah, and not having data, you know, we're having a discussion we don't really know. And that, that's extremely frustrating. So are we. Can you get Brian to issue a subpoena to him? No, I, I think he'll get the information to us. He said it's a technology issue, and they were the technology firm. So we're, we're, we're pushing the information. They're also still working to try to make sure all these $10 passes are being issued out to everybody. And all the ones that didn't change over, and they're getting the, uh, they're scanning the back, and they see the sticker, and they're trying to get those tags registered in the system. And things are getting better. We don't have as much as that, but... We haven't got the data yet. You're exactly right. A lot of early housekeeping. Mm -hmm. uh, have you noticed a decrease in, in people buying fishing license because they're, I would think, confused about the parking situation? Just some people complain about the daily people coming in. Like it's probably further into the season. I think when people come in just for the day and they have to park, that's going to be an issue probably. They have to pay the $20. But you haven't noticed you're not selling as many is awfully early. But you have you're not selling, you're not losing sales for fishing. Certainly not in the last weekend, the last seven days we've been very busy. And, and one other question, you're you're, and I agree with Councilman Bach, your your need for an intern. Is that a summer intern? Is that what you're thinking? No, actually, um, because I spent my career in higher education, uh, many interns want to do something during the. Um, the semester, so we can work with somebody that's here for the spring or for the fall. I think that's a great awesome. idea. I do too. Right. Mr. Well, Kelly and I have talked, and, and Mr. Hatton, about providing, perhaps as an additional cost, a shuttle service for weddings or for any event, so that we could encourage the people to park at an off-site venue or location, and then we provide a shuttle to them, but they would have to pay for that. That would be an additional expense, just like they pay for other things at 801. I was going to ask you about that. At one time, we were of the opinion, I was confused as to how you were going to have weddings and have all the people from Raleigh and Charlotte to come for the wedding be able to park without paying $20 to go see Cousin Go Sally. over all of that and that's, they sign the contract so they understand. Um, even and that hasn't we, been a deterrent? Uh, no. No, it's certainly been a major question, but not a deterrent so far. What is your system right now? They pay? They pay up until their guest time. So because we're renting by the hour, they pay till their guest time. And I work with uh, Jim from um, Auto Connect to tell him when that guest time is. So he turns off any kind of system. And also then there aren't people in that area policing or writing tickets during that guest time. But people have found out that that's Oh, yeah, they're going to the beat the system. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I'll, I'll make two recommendations to the administration. One is to re-examine the, the contract for Coco Cabana and to strive to have that reflect the income that they're generating. The other is that um, when subject to something coming forward from Lisa, the, the intern position, that we consider that and put that in the budget as well. And lastly, I've been to a lot of weddings. My wife has uh, nine nieces. Hmm. Um, and almost every one of them involved a shuttle bus from a hotel. 
That's just an upcharge if you're holding the wedding. So I, I think that's a brilliant idea, and that clears all those people out of there. Um, so I don't know where you are in, in development of that idea, but that would make perfect sense to me. I would echo those recommendations. Could we access the, the rec departments? Well, that's what we'd have to utilize. We talked about that already. It would just be a matter of getting a magnetic sign to put over top of where it says rec center. It would just say 801 so that people know what they're looking for. And then, so we'd talk through that with everyone. And we had talked about talking to the Methodist Church there in Yopon to see if we could utilize their parking lot. Perfect. Perfect. Lisa, do you have an estimate for what a paid intern would be for a semester? I don't off the top of my head. Just curious. The other interns that we have in the system range from uh, $2,500 to $5,000. For the span? We already have yeah, some of them built into our budget and other departments. And they have to find their own housing. Mm -hmm. And lastly, um, and this is a theme Councilman Martin's brought up before, I agree with it. When we purchase the next recreation vehicle, if we're in the shuttle business, let's make sure it's electric, so, if possible. When we kick around advertising costs later, uh, I guess it goes without saying, if there was more money in advertising, you know exactly where you'd put it. I do. Um, certainly uh, more wedding-based uh, or focused areas or special events. Uh, being associated with uh, wedding wire and the knot has increased our traffic significantly, and we have paid for that uh, several times over for that investment. I would actually advertise on wedding wire or not. So is the increase noted here? Um, the recommendation is below the estimated 22-23 expense. For advertising? For advertising, yes ma'am. Um, it's still at uh, 4,500. So we've not given you more. Correct. Do you need more or is that sufficient? Um, that certainly covers uh, things that we do through Fisherman's Post, um, through the uh, chamber, and also then wedding wire or not. It's very limited advertising. I mean, we don't, we do some things with the pilot, um, but there's not a large budget to use. And, and of course, word of mouth. Is word of mouth your Absolutely. number one go to? Absolutely. We had a, an event there yesterday, and a woman approached me about having her uh, son's graduation party there in a, you know, another few weeks. So it happens all the time. The, the, hap the people who are in the venue are the best um, salespeople. Everybody else tells you, you stayed alive during COVID. Way to go. Uh, <laughs> Good job. Would another two thousand be sufficient? We, I mean, we'd work with that certainly. Yes. Any other questions? I'm good. When I asked another question last year, you all had me going down there filling the ice machine, so I'm not asking anything else. <laughs> we thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, and Trish. Thank you. thank you for all that you do, and Trish, welcome <clears throat> aboard. Thank you. Uh, the next budget we got, uh, Matt's not here today, um, so I'm going to do his, but we, are, we already have Steve here, so why don't we let's let Steve go first. Um, and the number is 540. 10 540. 10 540. So it's back up toward the front of the book. 10 540. Well, we've done a few things in Steve's department that we'll go through real quick. Since everybody finds the page. Where are we? 540. 10 540. Title Community Development on the part of the on the 
But it's really building inspection department. It's pink. <laughs> All right hand right. side. <laughs> building department, 10540. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes. Oh, sorry. Building You're inspection right. department. 10540. Um, you will see uh, increase. Uh, so what we've done last year was the first year that we separated these two departments out. We separated planning and we separated Steve and building. Um, it's, it's worked, uh, but we still had a few little kinks that we needed to work out. Um, Steve's funds are generated and needs to be spent inside Steve's department. Um, and those things can be transferred out of that. Uh, Steve came to us um, with some ideas for this year's budget. Um, Matt's and then people do inspections and those kind of things inside their zoning jobs as well. And so he brought up that we should be able to transfer the um, vehicle maintenance and fuel back over to his department and also the capital for the vehicle for next year or for the planning back in his department so we can pay for those within those funds. Um, so we have done that. So you'll see some changes in Matt's department and also Steve's department. Steve did not have any other capital coming this year, but now you'll see the $44,000 because that was in planning to replace the last trailblazer. Um, so now Steve will be purchasing that, and uh, Matt and will be utilizing the equipment, but it'll be paid for the fees that Steve's collecting. So that is, that's one of the changes with inside there. Uh, you notice we still did the transfer. Um, Steve uh, is one of the... Um, the tightest departments, yeah. uh, I should say. Um, Steve pinches every penny um, and makes sure that things are uh, accordingly. And, and so you can see, actually, he had a decrease of about 2%, even adding some of the extra costs from the other department. And again, this is the second year that we'll be running through this department. So um, things are looking up and, and getting better in, in the financial part. I think we're getting things separated. Some of the contracts for the printer and for Ezra or the GIS, we've got those worked out now between each department. Uh, so I think it's a better better run at it this year after our learning curve for this year. Uh, he's fully, fully staffed right this moment. <laughs> uh, he has uh, people that's in Code Enforcement Officer 1. We had two originally within the organizational, but we're trying to promote from within, as we've been saying. Um, so right now, uh, one, of the, one of the people gets the code enforcement officer to level. Uh, Steve will then promote one of those up to that to provide that service. So we'll do that in-house. He won't be asking for an additional staff member, but that person will be promoted up to that level. Uh, then we added the permit specialist to last year, which has worked well. Uh, hopefully it speeded up a few things downstairs. Uh, we've still had to use um, one of the retirees, Donna Coleman, has come in and still helped us at times uh, get things done. And that's when you'll turn over to the next page, uh, budget summary, sort of the uh, Excel sheet. You'll see the money in there for wages and overtime. Uh, that's sort of where we've been paying her out of. Um, she's no longer... Let me get to it. Yeah, the retiree insurance that you see, 54 or 540, 1,000. Um, as we age out, <laughs> um, those insurance benefits and retirement benefits age out as well. So that's now a zero due to one of the people aging out. Um, looking through the, the budget, you don't really see many changes, but like I said, the vehicle fleet maintenance. That increase was the money that we transferred over from Matt's department into Steve's department uh, to be able to associate it with those funds. Um, the capital um, estimated for this year, have you gotten your truck yet? I just talked to uh, Mark and we're gonna go ahead and since that Ranger may still be available, because we just can't keep waiting. Yeah, uh, we got three vehicles yesterday. Uh, so they're starting to come in. I mean, these are a year and a half ago, but they're starting to come in. Uh, so we're starting to get those. So hopefully we can spend that capital item this year and not have to carry it over again. Um, as you see at the bottom of the page, 5420. Um, but like I said, Steve's pretty tight with his budget and he's available if you have any questions. Wow, Steve, you are tight. Uh, uh, fleet maintenance, that's, that's just no anticipation of problems. 
You, you've asked for 11,000, so that, that's pretty straight up, just basic. Yeah. Well, that's the transfer out of mats. Mats will be zero now. Yeah. Wow. So that's why you see the increase in the steeps. Yeah, no, that's minimal. Yeah. And last year you had a software changeover. Did that go okay? Huh. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we, we're working on new software. Uh, Edmund is coming online, and Dave can speak more about that software. But um, that, that's hopefully October. Yeah. Uh, what I've been told is a target yeah. date. The former company that you're addressing, we are getting rid of. Yeah. And we're bringing in a new company, and they've been working for us for the last four or five months, getting things in line to start doing some changeover in uh, September, October. But no mention in here of, of an expense for that. Edmonds is in another budget. Gotcha. Gotcha. It'd be an admin. Yeah. You saw, you saw it the other day. Yeah. I know you asked for... Um, or at least we talked about increase in permit fees. Are we comparable now with surrounding communities? I'm still working on the permit fee schedule. Um, I've had Joe Snap, who does the fire inspections. He reached out to several municipalities, got their fee schedule, and we're implementing, or not implementing, but suggesting some new fees in that department. I, I'm looking at some other fees. I've been talking with Matt as well about some of his fees, and I'm working on a spreadsheet. That will be presented yeah. day to day. Uh, now, usually we bring the fee schedule to you at the very end. At the end, right. Rick will have some changes. Uh, Heather will have some changes. Um, every department has the shot at it. The ones where we know we're not increasing is the water and sewer currently. I mean, those are staying flat. Um, and then we have the study in there in the water, like I said yesterday, for the system development fee study for next year. So um, it won't change until January of the next year but all the fees that we you're asking about will be at one meeting for the fee schedule right and there's a lot to go over that one day <laughs> is several people on this list are old timers <laughs> do you have a plan in place for if and when i do oh and, good um, deal uh, you know before we split the department you know I, I shifted some positions around because it was too many hats for one person to wear so as the floodplain and camera officer, uh, that was a position that y'all helped create uh, <clears throat> that we filled. Was that 21, 22 budget? <laughs> but yeah. um, but I, I am building the department up, like you're saying. I've, right now, as long as we can retain the staff that we have, I'm seeing a 10, 20 year range of staffing. The, the, one of the problems that we had um, when we were trying to get to level two that he talked about was the salary just wasn't there to, to entice somebody with that certifications right. to come over. It had been a lateral move for them. And nobody's going to leave a secure position. Right. So, but I've, I've got a good group of inspectors down there now and staffing. And um, like I said, right now it's a 1020 range. Good deal. So you're going to stay 10 more years, is that what you're saying? Um, I'm thinking two. <laughs> <laughs> Unless y'all think otherwise. <laughs> I want to go back to the beginning. There's a question for you, Mr. Hatton. So the argument last year was to bifurcate a department, create two. And last year I said to you, um, are we going to end up being cost neutral by creating two from one? And so that's still my question. Are we cost neutral or has it cost more money? We're cost neutral. You've checked it. Yeah. But that, you have to, we added two positions within this time too. Right. So that's that's the change. Other than added positions, it's cost neutral. Correct. Yes, sir. Because the argument that the administration made was this would be more efficient. And you have proof that it is. We are. Okay. I think we're receiving less complaints from the public. It's one thing we were trying to work on as well. Well, that would be an interesting metric to see. But I'd like to see the, the cost numbers at some point, because I'm sure you've looked at that. OK. Uh, one last question, uh, one of the Davids. Uh, I respect Steve knows what he wants, and, and I don't want to throw any kind of monkey wrench into what Steve wants. but. 
these proposed raises, is that on top of the proposed raise that everybody across the board got last year? Those raises. But current approved. Oh, so what you see, the market adjustment is currently, um, well, that one. So what we started looking at yesterday, we had to start putting the colas back in and start laying those out. So Steve's was the first department that we laid the cola back into. And right now it's, and those numbers will definitely change. It was just us trying to start to enter something to see what it does to the tax base on the end and start looking at the numbers to see what percentages that we provide. Um, and what you see there, the market adjustment, basically that would be flipped. The bottom person making the $1,600 and Steve making the thirty-two five. That'll be actually when it's time to be presented to y'all, that'll be flipped because it'll be the people on the bottom that'll be making the more adjustments and the people at the top will be getting less adjustments. I just need a clarification and, and yeah. by all means. We laid one of those in there. That We should have turned that item off for today yeah. because that that's where we started laying just to try to find a dollar number then be able to look at the town as a whole, and then take the um, salary ranges um, from 15 to whatever that we're looking at and apply them a certain rate. And then as you climb on pay grades, it's a less rate, less rate, less rate till you get to the top. But, but that, that was a good question. Yeah, but I wanted to tell Steve, I know that Steve knows his department and I didn't wanna, I wasn't throwing a monkey wrench at it, I was just wanted some clarification. Well, along those lines, um, I, Chair Councilman Kraft's interest in this. So as we discussed at the last meeting, we, we have an internal mobility um, theory that we're applying across departments by creating movement, mm -hmm. thereby giving them a raise, thereby incentivizing them to stay, et cetera, et cetera. I'd like to see the overall numbers when we get to salary. Yeah. Right? So oh, you'll see. Across the entirety of our workforce. Because yeah. you're just giving it to us in pieces, and it's hard to evaluate what this really means. Now, again, later, I'll say what I said the last time. Yeah. I think it's an interesting idea uh, and probably worthwhile, but I want to know what the cost is. Yeah. That's all. The overall cost. I'm yeah. working on that now. You're working on it. Okay. Yeah. But it'll go back three-year period because we started this three years ago. Okay. Well, when we get to the end, mm -hmm. we'll have a number. So, Steve... Um, I know time to process permits is uh, historically an issue with the added staff. Have you been able to process permits more quickly? I know you're getting more, um, so that probably balances out. But Processing quickly, it, it has, the production has increased on, on the processing end. Um, need to work with the Individuals a little easier. Contractors pretty much have it down, but individual homeowners say they, they struggle with understanding the application. So it's taken longer to get approved for missing information and documentation that's needed. But um, and, and especially with some of the small businesses coming in, trying to open up in a, a little strip mall and not understanding separation requirements and things that the building code has to have. Right. Um, and, and it's a struggle for them. And, Unfortunately, I can't, or staff can't complete applications for them. Right. And and they are, are you know, upset, I would say, when they realize that they're in, they can't get their permit right away. But that's not on the staffing issue. That's on the applicants' uh, lack of knowledge of how to fill it. Didn't want to say ignorant, but it's just not knowing the process and the documentation. Either. So, um, actually, to your credit, I was standing in line the other day to submit paperwork, and um, your staff were incredibly helpful to the people that were in front of this. So, kudos in that regard. We've got a good team downstairs. All evidence is that they're doing a good job. I will. Thank you. I know there's only so many vacant lots and so many houses are being knocked down and rebuilt. Are we still around the 300 range for new housing permits? Or is that going down? The trajectory down? right now is not 300. Um, I put in the same as did last year's 220. We, you, know, you, you get the monthly reports and uh, you know, and so far to date this, 
from not April, just the first quarter we, we issued 42 homes. So um, sometimes we'll see an, an increase in April through June, so the second quarter is usually a little higher. Uh, third quarter starts tapering, fourth quarter it has a plateau as well. So I've still got a projection of 220 homes, new homes. Although Hawthorne, y'all just approved the um, the cottage over there in Fine Pars, and uh, usually when they get started on something, they get started on it. So that's going to be a that could affect the numbers. Seeing a lot more commercial applications come in. I've talked to a couple of other developers just recently, and, and they've got some things that they want to bring in, and I direct them to Matt to uh, to have that looked at. Steve, when you put, um, I know this is dangerous, but uh, coming from you, I think it would be relatively safe. The percentage of build out on the island, where would you, where would you put that number? I mean, I've heard 85%. Oh, just on the island side? Just on, only on the island? Probably around 70, 75%. Okay. That's much well, lower than some of the numbers that have been floated. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of parcels that have multiple lots underneath them, and and as Bill said earlier, we're seeing teardowns, and they're splitting the lots out. We're having people come in that are finding these large lots on the island that they can actually subdivide to one, to two, from one lot to two lots. And uh, Brady's doing a really good job. That's the planner one that, that we got hired last year. And reading the rules and understanding how they can be divided out. And unfortunately, a couple of them couldn't be, but we are seeing new subdivision or divisions of land? Well, you anticipated my next question. Uh, I, I think that the danger zone clearly is when we start rebuilding with teardowns and uh, I worry that we don't have um, the kind of zoning protections we need because as we run out of room, we run out of vacant lots, we're, some of these older, smaller homes are going to be torn down. There's no question that's coming. I guess... Um, we need to really think about being prepared for that from a zoning inspection perspective, because um, our island will follow the, the growth pattern of all islands, and that's you know, in the northern part of the Atlantic coast, that's already occurred. Builders just came in and knocked down everything that was old, yeah. small, and put up enormous structures. So it's a it's a real challenge. I'm sure you're well aware of that. So even at 75% build-out, we're seeing some of that already. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'm going to go with that number. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Max could probably give you a much closer number. <laughs> yeah, and that number changes. Right after sewer, we didn't have as many people re-subdividing. And then now we do. And then we have the older home that set inside where that lot won't have the setback, they're taking down that old home so then they can build on those two lots. So things are changing, but land's valuable. Mm -hmm. Land's valuable. Growth, demand for services, costs, all that's going to be driven by subdivision and or tear down, you know, mm -hmm. rebuild. That, that's a huge issue going forward, especially if we're seeing it at 75%, not, I thought we were at 85, so. Probably looked at a half a dozen just this month. before. Yeah, that's the precursor. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you look up here at 66, 67, that one parcel is now six lots. Yes, nine lots. Orchard or nine lots. Nine lots. Yeah, the makes orchard a, makes a difference. <laughs> I don't have a tiny house. <laughs> you do or you want one? I ha I will have one once <laughs> all that happens. I don't know if you notice there's one on East Oak Island Drive that sits back off the property there. A tiny house? Mm -hmm. That 33rd? Somewhere along 30 there. 32nd? Yeah. They do plan on building a bigger house eventually in front of it, but they're going to have to take that accessory structure out as being a the dwelling unit because right now it's a house and you can only have one dwelling unit so they're gonna have to do some modification to get the permit <clears throat> unless we look at an ordinance to allow <laughs> accessory dwelling units you know the affordable housing is one of the things that you keep hearing about right 
I'm I was referring to my 1100 square foot house. It will be a tiny house once they start building the mega mansions. And I do feel like the island was developed to be smaller yes. fishing type villages, but that ship has sailed. E.F. Middleton had the Ford mentality that he wanted everybody to be able to afford a place at the beach. Correct. Sheila's a great example as to multiple lots underneath yep. one parcel. She has three lots, and I can see somebody coming in, purchasing that, bulldozing the house, and bringing back out the three lots. It's actually two lots and 2.75 lots I so it's it's <laughs> it's like this and it would be it would be but there is enough land there to do to make three lots, lots. correct yeah. and, and that's what these uh, developers are, are, are looking and seeking out are these lots that can be divided into two and just you know economic reasons that send them to me <laughs> I don't yeah. think there's only should. so much land to live at the ocean yeah they don't make it well uh, they are making it but you know <laughs> <laughs> Then that trickles down to utilities. So they have one sewer tap currently and one water tap. So then now they got three water taps and three sewer taps. So the revenue is generated in many ways. So that fee is, um, that fee's gone up? The, the, we haven't increased our fees, but when the person subdivides the lots, then they have to buy the utilities for Pay the, three times instead of one time. Right. So we're getting... We get them all the way around. Any other questions for Steve? As always, thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, now we get to the other part. If you'll turn the page, uh, 10 Um, so what you see is pretty much the same bones kind of thing, except the one number in operating expenses. Uh, council had discussed uh, revisiting or uh, revising the land use plan. Uh, we had Matt go out and get some rough numbers for us. I think it came back at 125,000. Huh? 125,000. 125, so that is that increase in the operating expenses is $125,000 for the land use plan. Meaning he's going to uh, commission that out to so council, the government. Or council started discussion, and once council gives the directive, um, then next year in July we will start to look for a firm to be able to do the land use plan update, if you so wish. So that's the big change, and like I said, the capital. Um, he just got his two trucks in, so the eighty thousand. If you look on the next page, you'll see the expenditure sheet. I think it came in like 85, 85, 847. Um, so there was a slight increase just because the, they do charge us extra even though the, we have a number locked in. We get hit for those. Um, you'll see he went up on staff development. Uh, he wanted to be able to send some people to, to conferences and to additional trainings. Uh, Courtney, our LPO, um, floodplain management, she has continuing ed classes that she needs to go to. Matt's got continuing ed classes. And then when you have um, Brady, uh, Planner One, uh, there's some certifications like we'd like him to obtain so he can take on more tasks on a daily basis. And then you see the fleet main is now a zero, zero, zero because all that's been transferred over to Steve's department. So could we have... Um some additional detail about the uh, contract for the land use plan. That, that seems pricey. Who's doing Is that just a plug number? That's just a plug number. So he called around to yeah. other municipalities that just went through the process, got the numbers that they had been contracted for, and, and we stuck that in there as a plug number. Because that's what the uh, other towns, the size that we have, and the work that Matt says would be uh, involved and think, looked at those contracts. I think all the samples on the list that Matt got, it was between 115,000 and 125. Yeah. It's gone up a lot since 2017. Yes, sir. Is that showing up twice? Is that also showing up in contracted services? That is in contracts. It it's in contract service. 
Yep. The breakdown's on the next page. Yeah. Flip over. Yeah. Is that um, a one or a two year contract? It should be a one year contract. But if it, it carries over, it'll just carry over to them. Thank you. And the staff development, that's just the. The extra training and certifications that um, the department needs. We keep keep putting additional demands on staff, so we need to get them certified. And For the most part, they're kind of lean and mean, too. Yes, sir. They don't, these don't have a whole lot of additional expenses. Paper, pencils. <laughs> I do. I do note, mouse. <laughs> I do note you have an intern in the budget. Yes, sir. Uh, and they bring in. Uh, we have. We've had one for the last five years come in um, and do some services for. Them. Mm -hmm. So there shouldn't be a problem with Lisa's request because we do this. No, constantly. and we'll we'll sort of have to put out a, a few little fillers to the colleges to see if they have somebody can come. Okay. But, um, We've had them come in do a variety <coughs> of things. Last year we had a GIS person come in, had Rick's, Rick's, son. Rick's son come in, and he did some GIS work and other workforce, flew the drone on the weekends and those kind of things. So they've been very helpful. We may not pay the whole $2,500. Sometimes we only pay them $500. All depends on what the college gives them credit for. Right. What's well, a great learning experience? As you may recall that when we put the budget together for this department last year, we did a lot of assumptions, not knowing what it was really going to be. And then when I look at what we estimate the expense to be, we weren't very far off, which was which is good. I didn't want any big surprises. <laughs> All right. If no other, no other questions, we will go to 32-something. 32-562. And that's Rick. Yes, ma'am. If you'll go to the Stormwater Fund 32 to start with, right before it, over the revenues, <clears throat> so you can see Rick Rick's department. This is the first time that we started these stormwater fees, and Steve was getting some of these fees if we were actually even charging for them because we didn't really have a fee schedule that reflected them. Uh, Rick came in and, and explained the inspections and some things that he believed that uh, we were missing out on and, and not being able to observe or, or approve um, building. Uh, we didn't really have anybody watching a few other things. We had people getting behind on things, so... Um, we asked Rick to look at it. Uh, last year he talked about a, uh, a new position for a stormwater inspector um, and plan review. Um, we do have quite a, every permit that comes in, building permit has to be reviewed for stormwater. Um, then driveway permit, swim pools, accessory buildings, uh, everything has to go back through stormwater now uh, where, it, where it should be. Um, so those things have picked up, and Rick can explain that here in a minute. Um, but we gave it a, another year to be able to see what kind of information we could bring back uh, and then see if we needed to bring that person in. So that person is in the budget. Um, so you can see the increase estimated revenue we had at 50500 and um, right now we're estimating at 179 So there is a – funds are being generated within this department. <clears throat> Always good news. Yes, ma'am. Um, and it comes with some complaints. I ain't saying it's been a smooth road either. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been a new thing for builders and, and people. Um, so it has been sort of a, a rough road to get to where we're at right this moment. But it is improving all the time. So if you'll turn the page over to the stormwater department um, and look at the summary sheet, uh, you'll see a, a large increase there at capital outlay. Um, right now we have a contract to do the phase one 801 stormwater project uh, that was coming out of the ARP funds. Um, and we had sort of earmarked that first check that we got, the $1.3 million for stormwater projects. The other 
uh, check we, we bought police and fire equipment and apparatuses out of last year. Um, and so the 600, is it 600 or 610? 16. 16. 610,000 for that improvement. Um, and we stuck that in there and we are transferring ARP funds over to be able to pay for that. It's, we're not going up on rates or anything to accommodate that. So that's where you see the big jump in the capital outlay. But we'll go over that page here in a second. Um, salaries, you'll see that we're adding the um, uh, plan review and inspector position in. Um, so you'll see that operating expenses. Uh, we'll go over some of those here in just a second. But that's sort of the overview in the department. So if you flip to the um, Excel sort of spreadsheet, uh, you'll see another retiree insurance, um, OPEB. Um, that person is aged out, so we have the, that cost is now gone. Um, the new employee up top, uh, salary and wages, that, that's for the new employee. Uh, vehicle fleet, um, those are some of the fuel costs that we talked about within some other departments. Uh, you look at the public education, you see that we've only spent the 813, uh, but Rick has been talking about doing a new contractor education material as the summer comes in. Uh, he'll be re-advertising that through the contractors, and uh, so he probably will spend all that money before the end of the year. Uh, staff development, we actually put in some extra money for that, even though you see it's um, where it's at currently. Um, we need to get these people, they offer certifications within the stormwater field, uh, so we need to get these people some certifications. Uh, we need Rick to be able to get the certification in stormwater. They, it's not a big fee, but it is one. Um, and then if we brought the new person in, we'd have some training that they would need to attend as well. Um, OSHA compliance. Um, basically, we buy boots and stuff out of this line item. Cost of boots went up, so that's why you see the the uh, slight in or the nine hundred dollar increase there. And then we still have some items that are being um, on back order that should be coming in for the years out. So that twenty six hundred should be able to be able to come up and cover the additional cost. Um, Rick can go over here in a minute. The um, maintenance and repairs of drainage. Um, then you look down to the contracted services. You'll see that the number in current budget is 50,000. We had done a budget amendment earlier. That number originally was 80,000, but we moved 30,000 to cover some other expenses. And then you see the big jump to the 170. Um, but what that is in contracted service is we had $50,000 in this year to do a survey of, of everything Rick has found and everything that's in the stormwater ditches, culvert pipes, inverts, um, how many open ditches we have, how many closed ditches we have. And we started looking at it and it, it was larger than what we anticipated. So what we're doing is looking at rolling over that $50,000 into next year's budget and it'd be a total of $90,000 is what the rough cost we're getting from the engineers to be able to do that study that we want. So there won't be that $50,000 expenditure this year out of that line item. Um, and then we get to drainage projects. Rick's going to talk to you about those. Um, one thing we did add in contract to services this year, there's a lot of grant opportunities out there that we're seeing, and, and we don't have the staff to do that. So we put in $30,000 to be able to have somebody come in and apply for grants, sort of like we're doing with the other person that we talked about yesterday in storm, I mean, uh, in wastewater. It'd be something in that kind of nature we'd be doing here as well. If we get it, then we would spend it. If not, then the money would be retained. Um, like I said, we talked about the ARP money. Uh, that's a council decision on that one, but we stuck that in there and we brought funds over from the ARP fund to be able to pay for the capital improvement to the system. Uh, capital equipment, if we turn the page to the um, Excel, I mean to the Word document, um, we had one more truck that we were wanting to purchase for that department. Uh, we've been driving, I think it's a building inspections vehicle that we borrowed that we borrowed that truck from the street department who had borrowed it from the water department who got it from the inspections department um so that vehicle has been passed around we bought a traco mini traco last year um we said we wanted to be able to see the services and everything it was provided we're leaving it in different locations of the town right now because we don't have transport for it uh, and that is the truck and the trailer is for the transport of the traco and that is sort of my overview of it <laughs> uh, Pacific well, that's two trucks 
It'd be, yes, it'd be one the Ford F-150, then the other one's a heavier truck to be able to pull the trailer and the Kubota. Well, it's not, a, what kind of excavator do we buy? What in Kubota? It's a Kubota. Kubota, yeah. Well, <coughs> the header page is, is telltale. I mean, so you're looking at um, a major investment in stormwater. That's fine, because I'm tired of hearing the complaints. Uh, your operating expenses are up 45%. Your capital is up almost 600%. Those are numbers that make your head snap back. Um, Arguably, we've ignored it for such a long time that we now have to furnish Rick with what he needs. Uh, but I am curious about 100, 170000 in contracted services. What is the system-wide study that we're paying for there? What does what that we've been do? looking at is just an analysis of the system to see uh, we have such a mixed variety of piping from concrete to plastic to corrugated see what's failed, what hasn't failed. As, as we come across it, we're always examining it, but we have so much piping. Uh, and then we have in certain areas, especially along um, <clears throat> Yacht Drive, we have such a flat area there, it's extremely hard to get our drainage to actually flow in some of those areas, plus we're getting groundwater coming up. So it's just, it's going to, so we started out with the contractor, they were almost, it was going to be too precise. We, we, it was almost too too um, uh, too close. To, but we need just an overview of the, the heights in, inside those pipes, uh, measuring down, um, and, and just an overview of looking at every structure we have to see if it's failed, if it's if it's functioning properly, what the size of it is, um, and and a rough G, uh, GPS um, uh, uh, position on that. That's what we're looking at. So we've been back and forth with the, with the. Will the study include recommendations or it's simply diagnostic? It, it'll be the only recommendation will be whether the pipe is at the condition of the, of the piping. Okay. And when this study is complete, one of the things that you talked about when we first met you was creating a master plan. So I would assume you need this study yes, to lay out the next it, yeah. five years because you're not sure what you have. Is that fair? Yes, sir. In the ground. Okay. Talk to me about the uh, $10,000 for Live Oaks. Where are they going to go? Uh, probably back on East Oak Island Drive, where we've been. Uh, I will go over some of that in another document here. We've been removing the uh, invasive Bradford pears, as mm -hmm. the Department of Agriculture suggested. So we'll plant those back to help beautification in that area. Okay. What the was. Thank you. Yeah. And go back to the uh, drainage project. Uh, council approved a um, sort of, a, I think it was like a nine step thing on Ocean Drive down in the Yopon area. And we were starting at 801 near the pier, going all the way down to 74th Street or 79th Street. And so we started looking at this to see, and then Rick's been sort of monitoring um, where we've been needing to pump after rain events or big storm events. And so then we took them to Coral Street and have them start looking at Coral Street as our second project. So this is in a in a uh, seven-stage plan that y'all have laid out that we're looking at it and bringing back. And then after we get the next one completed, then Rick and them will analyze the next phase because we're not going in the order that the engineer had it laid out. The engineer just went down the road, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're doing it by needs. So that's why number three is coming to you. I mean, you don't see the numbers, but that project coming to you before the block in front of that. Dixon was supposed to start two or three months ago, and it didn't get off the ground. Which one? At the 801. Oh, the 801. We've had the pre-construction meeting. They've ordered materials, and they should be coming in. We sort of looked at a time frame with Lisa as well to be able to shut down half half the building and then get that back in order and then shut down the other side so they can still have access to 801 so we don't stop her. Um, and everything's worked out. Um, Hickman and them should be coming here soon, I know. I mean, not the locates and all those kind of things when we call in. And the thirty thousand for for a grant writer, will the economic development person that we've hired be able to do some of that? Um, maybe, but that's not what we're bringing that person in for. 
Right. Um, I don't want to just start saying, you know, there's things that we're looking at to assign to this individual, but um, inside this field, I think we just need to keep things sort of separated and, and keep a, a drive going that's dedicated for one thing. Like I said, if we don't get the grants or there's not a, a cost of the grant for us, then that money will not be spent. Right. So if they get us a million dollars, they will get their percent. If it is a percentage kind of thing, it may be that their cost is covered or it's a shared cost or whatever kind of benefit payment is inside the grant. So this is the second department with these contingency grant costs. This is the other one that we had. Was sewer. We didn't put no money in it. It's, it's a zero cost right this minute. This one we put some funds in to cover it if it came back. Because the wastewater we knew we had to do, that's an assigned project. So we're asking for the funds for those uh, five different items that we're going to address. So that's that was the, that's the only difference. So I, I think when you mm -hmm. introduce the EDO, we should have a discussion of what her duties are per the job description, mm -hmm. what you are anticipating she she will be focused on. That would very I think be very illuminating mm -hmm. for council. Okay. Uh, Rick, an unpleasant question. I know that you've been really proactive on the new building and the, and the developments and what have you. What steps are we doing on, I know we're at sea level, but what steps are we doing on the standing water uh, up and down Pelican, and up and down Dolphin, where have you? So, yes, yeah, so I do think that the dune in, on a longer term plan, which I do have some, our dune infiltration, in my opinion, will give us the, the largest a bang for our buck of getting rid of that water because in those areas there's just nowhere else for it to go um, and with that being said on the first project the engineer had we additionally added in some additional work for the 801 building that would help enhance that building because every time it rains it floods there so so we increased we we uh, identified those problems added it to it as well as we examined what they had originally had in this dune infiltration which is basically like you have at Caswell, and we were able to go back in and work with CAMA, and we made that thing uh, larger with very little cost that made it three times the storage capacity. So that was a tremendous savings for us. And then like um, Mr. Ha uh, 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 Mr. Kelly talked about, the next place we always pump at is at Crawl Street. It really gets flooded really bad there. Used a foot, foot and a half of water. So that wasn't even on their radar, but we're going to, we added some, that was the, uh, another $105,000 there to, to get that evaluated there. And again, th this is all on town property. Some of these other numbers, as we look at their list, is on private property. So they don't have any cost associated with that for land purchases or, or um, uh, easements. Uh, but I do think we can work, I do think we can work and I've been, it's been favorable so far of getting free access to some of those sites. Because when we're done, they can't really do anything with the property there anyhow. And when we're done, there will be actually uh, more protection for their home. So the seven projects the engineers are bringing forward in the dune infiltration, that is addressing the standing water in the streets. Yes, absolutely. And at the, the end of that was converting fish factory, a satellite plant, back into a stormwater management plan, but that was up there. I mean, that was up in that uh, $3 million range just for that one project. So that that would be quite a, a ways down the road. It's, it's not the fish factory plant, it's the, the uh, satellite plant over on Yaw Drive. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Right. 19th Street or wherever yeah. it is, yeah. No, um, 52nd, 54th, yeah. right there at the Dutchman Creek Villas. Yeah. Because um, we had looked at that. So the areas that we addressed first was there on Ocean Drive. And those are the ones we're addressing right this minute. We had a call about King's Land the other day, so they're looking at that. Um, there's nowhere there, as you know, for that water to go either, and we can't pipe it to nowhere. So we're looking. Rick's guys went down there and dug some test holes to see where the water tables were. Um, and you all know everything we do is tidal affected, so low tide, high tide, those kind of things to see where water is, to see if you can put any kind of infiltration system in there. Um, so there is things that they are still working on that's going to be spent in this year. Um, but on the projects that we have in front of you, those are just on the Ocean Drive, and there are other things. And 
And the DOT, when they reached out and we talked to them, we told them that we'd like them to start monitoring Beach Drive because we know right near Ocean Crest Pier, right there in that dip, it always floods. Yeah. And so we put a few of those on their radar and Sean had flown them a year ago and we provided that detail to them because we had him flying after a storm event so we could document it. So they're, they're aware of they have some drainage projects, but they're just like us. They're going to have to probably put in a pump station and pump it uh, over to Pelican or Dolphin and discharge it. Um, and then we'll have to let it percolate to the ground. And hopefully it doesn't percolate right back. Uh, so that, that's things that we just have to look at. Rick, thank you for your, um, your tally sheet of yeah. projects accomplished. I'm curious. 141 pool permits, were they all new pools? They were. I, as far as, wow. The report that I see is, is rather confusing. And there's some numbers that can be duplicated very quickly. But, but that was the, the new pools from July, excuse me, from July 1 last year till today. There was 141, um, and I did review all those. Um, and like I said, you know, we, and Steve talked about, so as of what I've looked at so far was 206 land development for that. It's just for residential homes, basically. Um, so they're also, I also do look at some of the field permits. I look at all those. And, and as you know, you know, we really have a challenge with, um, in the past, maybe the newer homes were raised up. We have an older home that's down now three foot. So what do we do? So basically we're, we're making them put up some retaining walls about all we can do so that all that doesn't go down. So, so th those are rather involved. Um, and we do work with Pine Fours. Uh, I am working on an additional sediment erosion control plan for them. But we do, you know, we do receive uh, uh, stormwater fees for them and their reviews. Um, so that, that's always a good thing. Um, yep. I did show some of our other just, um, our, our basic maintenance on those systems. Um, we just got some 18-inch pipe in. Yes, it was over $18 a foot. So, you know, we haven't, we, we have developed areas where now we can get the pipe in truckloads to save, get a bulk price on that as far as, and also our stone, those things. So when we close a road, we can actually get that work done usually in a day or two days at the most without too much interruption. Um, that's quite a long list. I want to stay with pools for a minute because they seem to be proliferating along the beachfront. And logically, that would seem to pose a real flooding risk. Is it, is it difficult to get stormwater compliance when you put a pool in, essentially in the second row or in some cases on the beach? No more. You know, we typically around those, we basically, there are several structures they can do, but typically we just collect the water off of that concrete and, and run it into basically a, a, a stone trench that's, that's designed for 1.5 inches of rain like all everything else. And then uh, at the top of that, they can usually use a different wash type gravel to make it more decorative. Uh, that's probably the, the most common practice. And now we're looking and now we're seeing a lot of the homes that I'm reviewing, we're already at 45% and we don't even have a driveway. Um, so they're already at 45% with no swimming pool, no anything. So a lot of times now you're seeing those pools elevated to that second deck because then no, no storm water would be required. Um, so yeah, it is, in some situations it is hard, in others not so much. We are very fortunate here that we do have a soil that is very, the sandy soil is very infiltrate, you know, will infiltrate very well. And without that, that's what saves us here. Uh, but we have the we have the devil of a high water table. So in some of these areas, we don't really it'll drain for 12 hours, and then we'll be staying in water for 12 hours. And there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Uh, Thank you. One of the um, complaints that I hear. Um, is that our stormwater um, methods are at a substantial cost to the developers. Is that a true statement? No. Um, 
based on the price of the house, it, it's probably not even a half a percent. So, you know, you're looking at average somewhere between about five and $10,000, depending on the size of the home. Uh, so in, in reality, no. I mean, they'll spend as much on their landscaping as they do on their stormwater. And we have allowed, we have as more stormwater options now than we ever had different systems we can do, but yet we do have pre-approved ones. And that's what allows me to do 200 plans a year without ever one being individual calculations. Um, so, so those chambers or the stone or whatever, many, many will use that stone, especially in these larger homes, actually when they're done, almost as a, a walkway. So they'll get some double duty out of some of those. But most all those structures can also be placed under the driveways, which would free up all their open space. And when we talk about that, we got to remember we still have electric and sewer coming underground too. Right. So, uh, and then the other, you know, we're, you're seeing more and more of the pervious concrete or the gravel going from across town property, that that greatly reduces the amount of stormwater that we do get comes right out to the road. So we are encouraging, um, types of driveways that are not just paved concrete. Yes, and that would be a, a, a war stone or a, a pervious concrete, which is a little rougher, but we have worked with them. You'll see any more. You'll see a lot of times we do allow a concrete border around it and then a, a, a stone in front, which is a, is a little more attractive. Uh, so we have been trying to work on several different methods. I've been seeing your gravel all over instead of concrete. Yeah, some some are complaining because it only comes in one color. <laughs> and I think actually they could get it in different colors, but it would cost more. And ten thousand dollars is a significant cost for stormwater to me. <laughs> the old, it um, the, back in the, the day fire. when they used the pipe with the pellets in it or the peanuts. We do that, not allow that because of the potential. Number one, most of the most of the uh, home the home builders, it would float. We get a heavy storm, it would float up, and then as soon as those were fractured, those peanuts actually would just float up into the air, and they were everywhere. So it's a really uh, a, a real pollution potential in our environment. Here. For the cost of that to what you're doing now, is that more expensive or less expensive? It, it, initially, it's less expensive, but when you've got to put it in twice after you've already moved in your home and you got to tear everything else up then, it actually costs more money. And the same way on the impervious concrete on the driveway, by the time you would do regular concrete and the stormwater, which would be a ditch with gravel or something like that, if you do the pervious concrete, even though it's a little more to start with, at the end of the day, on a small driveway, you save over $400 um, if you're the person writing the check. I applaud your efforts. Um, I think our stormwater situation is improving and promises to be even more effective. Um, we basically live on a sandbar, so I, th I think uh, uh, it's more than time that we install the programs that you've initiated, and I very much appreciate your perspective and your efforts. I have two items before we close out. First one might be simple. Um, so the, the plans for replanting along um, Oak Island Drive, um, I'm not giving up on greenways. And East Oak Island Drive is the target for the feasibility study that this council approved last year. So hopefully those replantings aren't going to be in in locations that may potentially have to be removed again in the future it, when a greenway goes in uh, along East Oak Island Drive. So please make sure you're coordinating with um, multiple departments in that respect so we're not planning something that's going to be cut down or uprooted hopefully in the near future along East Oak Island Drive. Good point. Um, second comment. Yeah, you know, last year um, it was proposed to increase stormwater fees in the budget, and 
Uh, I opposed the increase to stormwater fees because along with the increase, there was no plan submitted as to how those increased revenues would be used. Um, I was hoping this year we would see a report that said, here's the, here's the outcome of the increased stormwater fees. I mean, we've got your tally sheet here, which is greatly appreciated, but I would like to see whether it's on this tally sheet or maybe it's another report that says, if we didn't increase stormwater fees, this would not have happened. So I, I'm, I'm gonna assume you're gonna come back and say that there was some activities last year that you were allowed to complete because you had additional revenues to support that effort. But I don't, I don't have that data. All I see this year is a request for another staff member and an increase in operating expenses, which I know the majority of that is tied to contracted services, but I'm not seeing, I don't see the justification for how we slipped in last year, the increased stormwater fees. So that still makes me a little uncomfortable that we're not accounting for, thank you for approving stormwater fees, now here's how we utilize that. Does that make sense? That's something I'll be to have to do. Okay. All right. So, um, so the fees did take a while to, to take place. Uh, even though we did propose them, it was probably four months in before we actually started collecting any of those. We are projected at about $179,000 worth of fees that, that we brought in from stormwater and those, those planned reviews. Uh, so that, that will count in, in our budget now. I'm not exactly sure uh, that, just like all the money that comes in with stormwater, I'm only allowed a portion of that for my budget. Uh, so that does go to other departments or I, I think uh, Mr. Hatton and Mr. Kelly could maybe answer that better than me of what, what's still allowed for me. So as we do get increases um, on materials or uh, an extra employee, I do think we're still losing. Uh, we keep hearing code enforcement. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've done a, a few things. Uh, I do think we're really missing a boat on code enforcement as far as trees, replanting, and as well as the stormwater fields. Um, so, that that would help and also just the installation to help out to go out and help folks make sure we do look at everything out in the field when it's open so on, on some of those dollars we're we just have so much cost that i think it could be utilized all over and, and i did i did prepare another sheet where i basically tried to show out the dune project uh, with what you're talking about i may well hand that out I didn't get into too much detail, but I just basically took the increase that we got in our stormwater fees, and, and I'll, I'll just pass that out, and I kept it level what we were bringing in on our stormwater fees, just to show if we, if we were pretty conservative on that dune infiltrations over the next five years, that, that each year we, we, would, we would be in somewhere between 200 and 140 some thousand remaining after we purchased some of the equipment that we're that we're needing with the, uh, maybe that would help a little bit, but I didn't get too deep into it because I'm not sure um, that every bit of that money would be used at stormwater. Yeah, Mr. Hatton indicated that he could draft a summary and get it distributed, so. <clears throat> with yeah, with such expensive yeah, projects, Two three hundred thousand dollars clearly doesn't go a long way on those, but it does help. Two sheets or one.
And when we talked about Tyler earlier, I think Bill brought that up about the software. Mm -hmm. um, there is still a little bit of few glitches inside the Tyler software that's not kicking everything out. So sometimes when an item does get coded, it may take us a while to get those dollars back out and give them over to the right fund. But um, it's, it's 85% corrected, but there is still some out there that, so that's why we're hoping the Edmonds, when they come in, we're gonna have a, a different program laid out altogether so the public will be able to apply for everything without having to come to the door. And then they'll be able to see every layer. And then when they click a box for stormwater, it's gonna pull up Rick's fees inside that. And these will be the assumed fees for this project. And when they click on pool, then it's gonna say what the fee is for the pool. When they click on permit review, then it's gonna kick up. So they're gonna see in Edmonds, they'll be able to see what each item's costing them that they select that they're gonna need for their permitting process. That's what the plan is currently. Uh, and, and that's what we're trying to get so we can get this information out to them as soon as they're applying for something, just as the mayor came in, she could have seen every charge that she was gonna have for everything that she was wanting then. And if it required her to get a camera permit or whatever, it's gonna list those agencies that she needs to go to. And then it gives you that little thing that you follow, yes, 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 and if no, go here or whatever. It's got that same kind of technology. And then they can't submit it until those things are done. So every time they hit that button, it's gonna block it and it's gonna have a little red box that says, you haven't entered this data. So. That's the goal, to try to make everything work with inside the system, but right now, it's not there. I applaud that effort. We're, we're, we're working at it. It will, it will save staff hours considerable yes, time um, and keep things from being missed. Mm -hmm. Or the fund's not going to the right item until Mr. Hatton sees it on the quarterly report, and then Mr. Hatton has to move the funds back. So there's a... With this last sheet, um, there's an inference that there is a five-year stormwater project plan. Yeah, and that, that is basically the, the, the dune infiltration that we've already paid the engineers to do. Uh, but, but I do think it's important, like Mr. Kelly said, that that project does need to be tweaked to our, what we need the most. That's what we've been doing with that. So, so some of those costs, and I just tried to show um, – uh, some of the numbers, some of those later on, uh, there would be maybe some land rights involved, and maybe not. So that they are estimates on there. But I just tried to basically just show about what would keep, you know, to keep us in a, uh, to keep us in the uh, black there. Um, and I just tried to show like the fees and all just were basically remaining, remaining flat. Even though we do know we, we may be picking up some more fees um, from a couple of the larger projects. Uh, we have tried to make, or I have tried to make more of the forms fillable and online. Mm -hmm. um, it just takes time for some of that. Right. Um, so that when somebody comes in, they can pull everything online. We can give them the website and save staff and all that. I also echo um, Mr. Martin's request to keep the trees plantings in sight for it. Um, any anticipated sidewalks or uh, the greenway. Right, and we've really, the only thing we've really done so far is, is remove those ones. We really need to get on this, we really need to get on, uh, we need to work with nature here. We need to do our plantings in the winter when we get some wetness so we don't have to water so much. And then, like like at Arbor Day, we are going, we got some trees planned for Arbor Day out of the park. Uh, but, but, but other than that, in Arbor Day, the kids need to come back and we can work on some maintenance to the trees. That, that would save a tremendous amount of time and be more successful in survivability. It's like the ones we planted out here and, and what we did at the skate park and, and all those, um, we're still trying to water a couple of them. It's just a really tough time of the year, especially with those larger trees, uh, to keep them alive here. It does take a lot of manpower. So the, those were nice and they're big, but they do, the bigger they are, the more requirements keep those surviving. So my sprinkler system is run by well. Could we not take advantage of wells? I think we sprinkling? can. I think we can. Save a good bit of money. Does the town have to pay for the water it uses? Just curiously. We don't bill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we have those larger us. oaks yeah. that require about 50 gallons of that. Um, so you have a gains and losses in your water system and your billing process. 
So all that's written into, I mean, we have to flush the hydrants twice a year for our fire flows, then we have the flow testings and right. it's a, it's a write off inside. Right. And that's just one question, please. Just <clears throat> the basics. And I go back to uh, the ocean crest pier, the lake down there. Um, what, in, in layman's terms, what is the plan to fix that, if you will? To, so we're going to, it's going to go into a, a grate. It's going to drop into a catch basin at the low spot. It'll be pumped out and then over into the dune infiltration. Okay. So it'll, it'll, pump, it'll pump to where the beach access is to the west. to be pumped over there. So it'll actually be pumped. Oh, same way with Crawl Street. All those basically the same way. It'll drop in and be pumped under the dunes where it'll infiltrate in at that point. Thank you. Because there is nowhere for it to go. Can't really do anything else there unless we, and that's what we do when, when we do pump, we have to get it, we have a camera permit, we have to keep two people on site, but we pump it back out onto the beach, which is, you know, we start getting calls immediately. Any other questions? I'm good. Thank you very much Thank for you. all you Thank do. You. Thank you, sir. Is that the end? Uh, that's all we have for you today, except for the um, closed session. I need a motion to go to closed session. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Mm-hmm. Meet again Tuesday. Absolutely. I'm reminding you. Thank you. Session. And, um, okay, good. Council has um, agreed to give Mr. Kelly an increase um, in salary. And so I need a motion for what we determined from Council. You need a motion? Yes, sir. I'll make the motion to increase the manager's salary by 5%. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. Thank you. So that was the action taken um, in our closed session. And we're only six months behind, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, only six months behind. Um, so I'd like to recess this meeting till Monday. Of Tuesday. 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 I'm April sorry. April 25th. Of <laughs> <coming> <laughs> <in>. <laughs> Motion to recess this meeting until Tuesday, April the 25th at 10 a.m. Second. Second. All in favor. Thank Never you very right much. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Let's go to lunch. You're buying, right? That's your question. <laughs>